Well, hello, my darlings, and welcome back to our channel. I am so glad you are here. Today on our channel, we are going to be creating a tabletop chandelier, the foundation of which, or rather the focal point of which you will not believe. I hope you'll stay tuned. For this project, you will need some crystal garlands as well as some glass pendants. You will need a piece of felt cut 5 inches by 5 inches. You will also need a styrofoam cube 5 by 5. You will need some silver spray paint, any brand of your choosing. You will need a solar light. You will need a small lampshade. You will also need a pack of these mirror tiles as well as some of these mirrored photo frames. If you cannot find these, however, please feel free to use the 5 inch square mirrored frames from Dollar Tree. Of course, you will need your handy dandy tools. Let's get crafting! So the first thing you are going to do with your lampshade is strip it of the shade itself. Whatever material it is that makes up that shade, you are taking it off because what you want to do is get to the mechanism that is underneath. Once you have exposed that mechanism, you are going to take it outside to spray, paint it in silver, and then you are going to set it to dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. So while we wait for our lamp mechanism to dry, we are going to prepare our mirrors. And to do this, we are simply going to lift up those tabs and remove them. And once we have removed those tabs, we are going to remove the kickstand, remove any sample pictures that may be there, as well as the acrylic piece, I guess. I could just turn it over. And then we're going to take all three of those pieces and discard them because we're not going to be using them for this project. Once you have done that, you can eye where you're going to place your mirrors. But first, before we set our mirrors down, we are going to place our felt. Now, of course, for those of you who have been with me for some time, you know that anytime we are making anything that is going to be sitting flat on the table, if that thing is being made out of styrofoam, we are also going to place a layer of felt under the styrofoam so that that styrofoam is not breaking into little bits and pieces on your table for your home decor or for your event. And to do this, all I'm doing is going in with a good amount of hot glue, outlining that styrofoam, and then simply placing that felt on top of that hot glue. Once we have done that, it is simply a matter of turning that cube over and allowing gravity and time to do the rest. Once we have done that, now we are ready to start laying our mirrored frames. And in order to do this, we're going to go in with our combination of our permanent glue as well as our hot glue. Knowing fully well that that combination, our permanent glue is going to cure over time while that hot glue is going to give us our immediate adhesion so that we can continue working. So simply taking my permanent glue and outlining the sides of that mirror and once I have placed that foundation down mirroring that same pattern with my hot glue once I have placed my foundation of hot glue down I am then ready to take that mirror and set it 
onto my foam. Now it is very important that you are squaring up the bottom, especially of that mirror with the edge of your foam because whenever we put this chandelier to stand we want to make sure that it can stand nice and square and unimpeded so i'm going to set this to dry for a few moments and then i'll be back to tell you what's next so here we have our cube with all of our mirrored frames set down using our permanent glue and our hot glue. And what I'm going to show you now is how we're going to use our mirror tiles to fill in the space in the middle as well as on the sides. Now, the measurement of the tile that we're going to be using is five across, excuse me, and eight up. And to do this, we are going to simply roll back the adhesive or the wax paper that comes on the back of this adhesive mirrors. And we are going to cut it out very carefully. Once we have cut this out, we are then going to take our hot glue and not using too much guys, because this um or rather the adhesive that is on the back of these mirrors as you can see is very strong but just to ensure that we are having a forever adhesion we are going to top this off with some hot glue on top of that styrofoam once you have placed the foundation of that hot glue you are going to go in on a diagonal and push up underneath that mirrored frame to ensure that that first row is secured. Once you have done that, the other seven rows will fit easily into that space. And as you can see, I'm going in with the back of my scissors and just smoothing out those tiles as much as possible. Now, in addition to the middle section, we also have the sides of that cube that we need to obscure. So I'm going in with my scissors and I'm cutting a length of 12 of those mirrors. And similar to what we did in the inner part, we're going to take our hot glue, place a light stream down and sit that mirror tile right on top of that hot glue. So what I'm going to do is continue this process going all the way around my cube, filling in my middle sections as well as the sections on the side, and then I'll be back to tell you what's next. So now that our lamp mechanism has dried, what we're going to do is prepare our solar light to receive the mechanism. And to do this, we are going to use our combination of our permanent glue as well as our hot glue to affix this lamp mechanism to our solar light. Now, I am going to place, if you can see, there is a lip, <clears throat> excuse me, almost like a hollow in that lamp mechanism that I'm actually putting my permanent glue in. in. And then on top of that, I'm piping in my hot glue into that same trough. Once I have placed both foundations of glue on, I'm going to turn the lampshade over, find my placement, and then apply some pressure, making sure that that glue, which is now upside down, is going to fall and engage with that solar light. When I am finished, I can then take my glue gun and pipe in some more glue around the circumference, the outer circumference of that circle. And if necessary, I can also pipe some more hot glue into the inner circumference. So here we have our cube 
that we have finished laying all of our mirrors but full disclosure remember when i was showing you guys how to lay that mirror tile in between the first mirrored panel that we set down i didn't realize that i was actually working at the top of my cube and by the time i did realize it i kind of freaked out because i forgot that we would have had to leave a space in which to sink that spike into our styrofoam so what i had to do was take my scissors and lift up those tiles in order to create the space you see there i want to caution you however these mirror tiles are not plastic they're not acrylic they are actually glass pieces so while i was digging them up a few of them splintered and a few glass pieces flew up in my face and i had to stop what i was doing and make sure to look for all of those tiny pieces so be careful my darlings once you have laid your tiles with enough space in the mirror to bury your spike, it is simply a matter of pushing that spike down into that foam, maybe placing some hot glue on the spike itself. And as you can see, that spike is very secured in that styrofoam. Now, if you'd like to, for that green styrofoam that we're seeing poking out there you can either use additional mirror tile to cover that or you can go in with some diamond wrap which is what i am going to do just to obscure that green foam on top so what i'm going to do next is take my crystal garlands with my pendants and start to place them on that mechanism of course this one is too long so i'm going to go ahead and pre-measure mine and then i'll be back to tell you what's next so here we have our solar lamp upon which i am almost finished placing my crystal garlands and here you can see where i placed my crystal pendants on the inside now for this particular garland i'm showing you how easy it is um, just taking that o-ring opening it and placing it over and atop that lamp mechanism until it snaps back closed and for this particular garland i used a count of seven crystals long and seven strands in each section if you notice there are three sections in the mechanism for the lamp and so in total you would need 21 strands of seven crystals long if you were to replicate the project as is right now and so just continuing to place my crystal garlands on my mechanism what i decided to do i was of two minds first i decided to take some diamond wrap and wrap the top of that solar light of course i did it off camera so that it would complete the look of that lamp so that was the first thing i did and then my thought process after that was do i want to leave this lamp uncapped to give it that urban chic look or do I want to top it with something so that it gives it a more luxurious feel? In the end, I chose to top it with one of the saucers from Dollar Tree. And the reason why I covered it was because I wanted to have that luxurious feel, that finished look. And then I also wanted to ensure that those O-rings were not going to dance around because the lip of that saucer was going to keep them in place. However, my darlings, whatever you decide, however you decide to cap this, just remember the choice is completely up to you. I actually like both looks. And so I'm going to clean this up of any glue fronts there are, clean my glass, and then I'll be back to show you what our finished project looks like. Well, here you have it, my darlings. 
our mirrored solar light tabletop chandelier. Isn't this piece absolutely breathtaking? I think I would have to say my favorite part of this project would have to be the juxtaposition of that smooth mirror next to the textured look of that mirrored tile. When I look at this, it just makes me want to reach out and touch it to get a feel of the smoothness that is a large mirror, while at the same time, the textured feel of that mirrored tile. But my darlings, I think I would have to say once again that we have nailed yet another project. Tell me, if you have found any value in this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as leave me a comment in the comment section below. What does this piece say to you? And if you were to remake it, let me know, would you cap it or would you leave it uncapped? I would love to hear from you. To my Danny's darlings, I just would like to tell you guys as usual and as always thank you for your love your comments your feedback your questions but most importantly i thank you for your encouragement please know that none of it is wasted and i appreciate each and every one of you to those of you who may not yet be Danny's darlings but who may have stumbled across our channel today kindly consider joining our ever-growing community of DIYers as we learn from and craft with each other on a weekly basis we would love to have you and if you so choose to join our community today by subscribing please also be sure to click the notification bell to ensure that you will be made aware anytime any of our videos have been published well my darlings my loves before i sign off today i'm going to leave you with the motto to our channel which is simply this say with me why buy when you can DIY. And so until next time, I say to you guys, please, please, please take care of yourselves for me. Know that I love you all. <laughs> Bye now.